friends this is rahul magan here as a chief executive officer of treasury consulting llp and today we would be covering a very dedicated topic which is ind as as 109 accounting standard 109 ecl expected credit losses but before moving to ecl i would like to ask a very simple question from everybody which is that why ecl why expected credit losses it's only because somebody who had made the law a regulatory body who has made the law or maybe xyz person who made the law he has considered ecl only because ifrs 9 is taking ecl into consideration does that mean that ifrs 9 is exactly exactly right at every place does that mean that whatsoever which has been written in ifrs 9 is something which is exactly right there is no need for any amendment in ifrs 9 Now my question to all those people, those who have drafted ECL nine and all the banks and all the companies, in fact the big four people, those who are supporting the ECL, is that boss, why ECL? Why not expected shortfall, which I am mentioning here, which is known as ES. Now the point of contention, the point of contention is that sitting today, the var is dead. Value at risk is completely dead. this has been supported by this has been supported this has been replaced by a new methodology which is known as expected shortfall if i am incorrect if i am correct then basel 3 basel 4 is on the way and with the basel 4 there are a lot of amendments which are subject to in expected shortfall method so my question to all those people is why we are going with ecl when this is an expand this is a methodology which is a history even this is a methodology which has not been adopted anywhere in this globe so you go to any bank goldman sachs uh credit suisse ubs standard chartered lehman uh, lehman brothers sisters city bank and and all this doishe anz west bank and other you will get to know that they are using expected shortfall If you don't trust, please visit the website www.goldmansas.com. Their website. Open their financial statement. In their financial statement, you will get a section which is Pillar Three. In this Pillar Three, you will see expected shortfall. Of course, you will see where also, but you will never see ECL. A little, little brief introduction of ECL is there. Now, moving back to topic, what is ECL? So-called ECL. ECL is nothing but it's a difference what you should receive but you have not received example ecl is this in the absence of any default or deterioration in the credit market or credit condition of a relevant economy of a sector of a relevant company or maybe a non banking financial corporation or a relevant person the difference between expected cash flow i write in bracket minus cash flow is something is ecl but for the people even those who are working in the nasa it's next to impossible to tell them boss how many planets we have in this world in the universe even though nasa has spent billions and billions of dollars in this world and you know they are still figuring out that boss what how many planets which we have in this world in a similar way the most contentious point which we have in this world as of now is the valuation of the expected is the expected credit flow today i have rented 100 rupees to you you are supposed to pay me 10 rupees i know that i will get 10 rupees after every 10 year assuming i lend 100 rupees at the rate of 10% for 10 years i know that after every one year you will give me 100 you will give me 10 rupees and at principal you give me uh, my 100 rupees back which is after 10 year what would if i get to know that boss you are turning default or your credit worth in is turn default then where i go the point of content is here i need to calculate the expected cash flow because the difference between expected cash flow and the cash flow will determine my ecl which will go in the pnl but i don't know that of course theoretically speaking we have we have a lot of models which we have across the globe these model helps people calculate how to value expected short flow but practically speaking the valuation of the expected short flow you know uh, i would say is something a very very subjective thing 
if you if 15 people will compute this then 15 would compute at their own way but nonetheless let's look at the law what law is saying and what are the philosophy which we have in the law if you are watching this video carefully i would like to note this that i would like to note note you that this is not the only video about ecl there are many videos which are on the way as far as the ecl is there now let's look at the law ECL is saying the valuation has to be done in the three phases. Wonderful. Which is performing stage, underperforming stage, and non performing stage. What is performing stage? Performing stage in the stage when the underlying is healthy and there is no reason to worry about. Now, what is underlying? According to a law, these followings would be the underlying. Example debtors, intercompany co group loans, inter, inter corporate deposits, debt investments loan commitments, financial guarantees, trade finance, lease receivables and derivative instrument. My, I would like to bring your attention to the two important things in that. Number one, which is financial guarantees and number two, which is trade finance. Let me mark this as a cross. The reason for marking crosses is that these both are off balance sheet exposure. Sitting today, as far as the Indian accounting standards are concerned, IFRS is concerned, and a lot of other accounting standards are concerned, the time you are nominating somebody as an off balance sheet exposer, you disregard the valuation. So, sitting today, I, as a company which is Reliant, which is Reliance Industries, is having a SPLC with the bank. I simply write that, boss, I have an SPLC. I mentioned this is in the notes to accounts. I disregard the valuation. But expected credit losses, ECL, and also the most sophisticated approach which we have today, which is ES, expected shortfall, which is much better than VAR, which we have, is also taking financial guarantees and trade finance instrument into consideration, which is an off-balance sheet exposure. This is the beauty of beauty. This is the beauty of beauty. Now, the point of content, the, the point of discussion is, there are many banks which we have in this world. You just name it. Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, UBS, HSBC, Deutsche, Parkless, Bank of America, you know, Citibank, SDFC, ICICI, Yes Bank, the list is endless. Now in all these banks, majority of the things are there. Debtors, intercompany group loans, intercorporate deposits, debt investment, loan commitments, financial guarantees, trade finance instrument, lease receivable and derivative instrument. And at a very first stage, which is a performing stage, as a company, you need to calculate the 12 months ECL, expected credit losses. So sitting today, which is 17th September 2016-17, you have to see, uh, and of course, this is an initial recognition. At initial recognition, you need to see 12 months of ECL. Can I have one model in India, which helps you to compute 12 months ECL sitting right away? Are these models certified by Reserve Bank of India? Do the big fours, EY, PwC, Deloitte and KPMG, do they understand these models? Very important point. And point number four, during the audit process, the, 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 you know, the team which these big fours are sending, they themselves do not know even the valuation of the derivative instrument. What about these financial models and the valuation? The perfect example which I wanted to give you in that regards, this, this the world is heading towards over-regulation. Example, in derivatives we already have CVA, which is Credit Valuation Adjustment, DVA, Debit Valuation Adjustment and list of adjustment is very long. In India, even in auditors are still struggling to get a right valuation of a CVA and we are here forcing the people at, our, at the stage one which is an initial recognition stage to compute the value of all these so-called instrument 12 months down the line. Another beautiful problem which we have as far as the initial recognition is concerned, this country as a whole and the regulator as a whole do not accept either of that. Example, the valuation model is always an issue. Pricing of ECL in the books by various counterparties is al al always an issue. So example, you are here taking Infosys India and here there is are some intercompany deposits Infosys London. The way their big force will value ECL would completely be differ Infosys India will value the ECL. Another problem is obsolete approach to MTM. MTM stands for mark to market. 
IFRS 9, US GAAP 157, sorry, 133, US 109, 99% valuation in India is happening on L1, level 1, whereby 100% of the observable variables are observable in nature. Now you must be thinking that what are these observable variables? Observable vari variables are those variables which are readily available into the market. Hardly, hardly 1% valuation in India is happening on L2 and L3 whereby you are taking non-observable variable also into consideration. Hardly we are doing that. Now my question is, as far as the credit risk management is concerned, we all understand, all the experts, those who are watching this video, even if you don't treat, treat me as an expert, they know very well that boss, 99% of the credit derivatives falls either L2 and L3. And here also they fall in L3. And the regulatory mechanism which we have in India is very conducive to L1. If you don't trust me, you go to any listed company in India. TCS, Tata Steel, Tata Motors, Infosys, Wipro, SCL, any company. You just take out their annual financial statements or annual report or, e or GenPAC, WNS, Accenture, Cognizant, Sapient, any of, any of the American companies. You take their annual report, uh, here they call this a 10K. You download their 10K and see that valuation has been done at L1 level. And please give me a call at 9899242978 and let me know that which company you have saw where the valuation happened at L3 level, although the valuation could have done at L3 level as well. As well. Another biggest problem which we have is the absence of is a regulatory acceptance. On theoretically speaking, Ministry of Corporate Affairs has issued a notification in, 2000, in uh, 2015, somewhere in August, that now companies have to comply with the INDAs and April 18 you have to comply with INDAS retrospective and prospective both but the question is is the compliance of INDAS whereby AS109 especially ECL where you are calculating the credit exposure boss do you seriously understand that do you need these indices you need CDS single name CDS multi name CDS single basket CDS multi basket CDS single trigger CDS first till default swaps and nth till default swap Without having all these instruments, entering into ECL is just like a suicide. It's just like jumping into the sea without even have a simple guard with you. Even you do, first of all, forget you know swimming or not. You are simply jumping into the sea and you have nothing in your hand. That is the point, something which I need to elaborate. In the second stage, if you see that credit worthiness have eroded, Whereby the beautiful fact, the difference between IFRS and ECL is that IFRS has given you some standard and some points to determine. Based upon these points, you will, you will say that quantitativeness is there, whether the credit uh, worthiness has been decreased or not. But here, in the, in the second part, everything is qualitative in nature. And what do you mean by qualitative? You yourself have to take a call. So a company has to take up a call that whether the credit worthiness has increased or decreased. Now I would like to ask a simple question. I am naming few bankrupt companies in India. India. Uh, Kingfisher, JP Group, Educom and variety of others. I just wanted to ask a simple question. Can you name me one company in India who have the guts and come forward and say that without having a live valuation of these credit indices, they can even tell me that the credit worthiness has eroded. How can in this world in 2017 September, without having quantitative models, we can even think of valuing our credit worthiness? The biggest flaw of INDAS is that without having any appropriate method mentioned in the accounting standards, you simply doubt that if a company feels that the credit worthiness has been eroded drastically, then rather than calculating the 12 months ECL, you will calculate the lifetime ECL and you will take this in PNL. What I meant to say is that five different people will calculate lifetime ECL in a 50 different way. And then the regulatory acceptance would be a challenge. This is just like which is happening in GST and this is just like which is happening in insolvency and bankruptcy court. 
in the insolvency and bankruptcy court and also in the GST, especially in the HSN courts, there are so many interpretation issues that two different chartered accountant firms see HSN number in their own way and now they are fighting the litigation. Similarly, similarly, here in insolvency and bankruptcy court, the valuation of intangible assets and so many things is always an issue. When the ECL would get start April 18, then I will give you in writing that this would be a major point of contention for banks, for financial institutions and for all the companies like Maruti and others, those who have a big financial guarantees and trade finance in their book. This is the purpose of this video is to just to introduce you about exactly what is the world of ECL. This is not the only video of ECL which we are launching. We continue to launch so many videos about, about ECL. You are always welcome to connect with us at uh, our website www.treshiconsulting.in Mobile number is 9899242978 My Skype ID is Rahul5327 My email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in We are doing the computation of ECL in our own way. We disregard the computation done uh, whatever whatsoever has been mentioned in R&D AS. This is completely theoretical in nature. In case you have any requirement Please do contact us. Thank you and have a wonderful time ahead. Thank you.